For the latest top tips, reviews and advice, please subscribe below. Hello and welcome to At Wars Outdoors with me, Mike. Today I'm going to do a bit of a review video on a brand new tent from Vango. So with me here today I have the Vango Castlewood 800XL and also they do a 400 as well. So the Castlewood is basically a new tent for the 23 season going forward. And what kind of Vango almost done is took, um, it's all, I suppose it supersedes um, the Vango Longleat, which is kind of in their range for a number of years. The Castlewood's really kind of the probably DNA of the Longleat, but with kind of a few major big differences to increase ventilation, just because we're kind of getting hot to summers, but also in a way to improve the fabric and get a sort of a longer lifespan out of the fabric, but also a higher sort of um, colour resilience as well. So we'll kind of go through all those little features throughout this video itself. So as I mentioned earlier, there is two different sizes of it. So you can get the 800XL or you can go for the 400. So it depends on where you want, you know, something that's bigger or smaller. They're both the same width, so run about 280 width. Just difference is this one's about 7 metres long and then the 400 is 5 metres long. This is what we call a traditional kind of vis-a-vis -vis tent, i.e. sleeping either end with a, min a middle sort of communal living area in between. It's a good way of getting completely separate comp sleeping compartments from the kids and hopefully means you actually get a good night um, and it just offers that something a little bit different. These, these tents a little bit aren't as popular as they, they used to be but they still very much have their own place in the market. It's worth mentioning that if you like the kind of concept of this there is an air version you can look at as well but we've done a separate review video on that so you can check that out as and when you see you want to. So what we've got here is kind of the pole version, definitely more sort of price orientated and it's all about offering a good quality tent but not necessarily costing a fortune. What we've got really is kind of Van Gogh's new um, Sentinel fabric. So it's um, all about basically being uh, a bit more eco. So what they've got is their kind of uh, color lock eco technology built into the material. It runs about a 3000 mil waterproof rating. Um, and essentially it's around about sort of 70D, I think it's about 98 grams per square meter to be around that region. Now, what is mainly different for the new 23 season going forward is actually the way they've actually dyed the material and that's one of the biggest things that's changed. So rather than say dyeing the fabric as it is, they've actually gone down to dye the thread. Now this is a bit of a different process and what it actually means is essentially that you get a lot more uh, solid colour throughout the out of the material itself. So as its lifespan goes on, it was not going to necessarily fade as quickly. The best kind of analogy I can kind of probably use for this is the difference between say a carrot and a radish. Your carrot is when you dye the thread. The radish is when you dye the material when it's already really woven. This is because essentially when the UV comes out, the sunlight, and starts kind of obviously sort of. Um, stripping away the outer layer of the actual fabric as it know how it will do and obviously the higher UV you get the quicker this happens you then get the sort of the individual center of it starting to come through hence why you know tents been up for a period of time they do look a bit tired and faded so with this new concept of dyeing the thread it basically means you get a higher uh, resilience for the color and it basically should look sharper for longer not only that, but actually saves about 60% of water in comparison to its over, over process. So generally what you find is that actually it's not it's more eco-friendly, as well as obviously getting a stronger colour and um, you know, throughout. So it's sort of best for both worlds. It's a really nice sort of move they've moved over to. Other things to note about kind of the, um, the tent is we've got obviously fiberglass poles. So it's sort of lightweight, but still kind of ample enough to hold out for some, what you know, most people who attend camping in. The Castlewood also finds actually is they have colour coordinated poles. So you've got little black tabs on the middle three sections. And in the back, back here, you've got a little grey tab. And the pole will have a grey section that signifies when you have all the poles out, you know exactly which way to feed them. The pole sleeves are actually quite short in comparison as well. So one of the joys of this, it makes it a bit easier to get the poles directly in and into the ringing pins at the bottom. And then the poles still clip on, so you still get the fabric pulled up to there. So it just makes life a little bit easier to kind of pitch them. Um, and you can see that from my own Atmos pitching and packing video. Pitching uh, the kind of castle wood, uh, show you how quick, simple and easy it really is. Probably the pole model, I think it took in the region of about sort of 16 or so minutes and um, doing that by yourself. You'd be probably doing that with a second pair of hands, which makes life a little bit easier. You probably get down to about 12 quite simply. 
Other features to mention, we've got things like um, two-tone guy lines. So we've got obviously a gray to match also the gray trim, and then the classic kind of Van Gogh orange to make sure you're not gonna trip over them in the middle of the night. We've got essentially four people sleeping on this end, four at this end, and later on in the video, we'll show you the 400 model as well, just to give you a bit of context of how big that is in comparison to larger. We've almost got, it's sort of, um, I wouldn't say symmetrical, kind of offset. So for example, we've got a door on each side, so a door is situated here and a window is on here. Crystal clear window with little toggle up curtain on the inside to get that privacy when you want it to. Low level ventilation beneath the window as well to help circulation in the air. And one thing that's probably big for on this particular model really now is you've got a whole big ventilation panel right at the back here. And you have the flexibility that you can actually roll it fully up or actually kind of have it down like um so that way you've got more of a weather type protection but you still can have the airflow directly in of course you see it off completely and also there's still a ventilation point at the top here as well uh, to help that sort of natural inflow so i'd always have the vents out certainly for this tent just because for the you know if you had eight people sleeping in here you are producing a lot of sort of moisture so condensation would potentially be kind of an issue the doors directly roll up so the joys of this is you can actually double it up as kind of a little bit of a canopy as well so by buying some additional king poles what you can do is utilize kind of the pegging loops off the guide points you can then bring that up create yourself a really nice little canopy to give you a bit more extra shelter if more space is what you're really after there is a side sort of extension you can actually Fry go up to the top and then actually come off one side so you can actually create yourself more like a little mini cooking area without having to sort of compromise on your main sort of um sort of living area the door itself is really quite good as well so not only do you have um, a window but you've actually got a full-on mesh part to it and again it zips up and down so you can get kind of the coverage as you want to so it allows you again to increase airflow so not only have you got it um, a main kind of one at the far either, either end, but you then got a big mesh panel in both sides of either doors. So again, lots of flexibility from that point of view. The entrance into the door actually sort of lips down and lips up, so you get that sort of seal having it vertically up when you wanted to, or you can actually unpeg it down. And not only have you got it, it reinforced it, so you've got two points on either side. There is also eyelets and then a Velcro patch. They've really done a good job to try and make sure it's sealed. And for me, that's a really quite nice improvement in comparison to really long leap how it used to be. I'll quickly roll this up. Personally, I probably can't appreciate the kind of colour on the camera, but what you've got is this essentially new colour is like a mint green, uh, and it really does look quite sharp. I think it looks kind of, from looking back on some of the footage we shot earlier, it's almost looked like a bit like a grey, but you can't really appreciate it until you see it in the flesh. But I'll tell you what, let's kind of actually go inside the castlewood and talk for a load more features that it has inside. So now inside a castle, you can probably get an idea for certainly the main living area. You know, it's an ample amount of area for table and chairs, and it's pretty much going to be, you know, fill up the space quite happily. Really, this tent's perfect for kind of those scout groups who want to sleep with a lot of people, uh, and also just generally for those families again who want that sort of separate space away. Headroom height in here is pretty good. I'm about six foot two, stand up in the middle. I mean, when you get to the sides, it's a little bit kind of not quite as close as you. It's not dead straight, but certainly when you've got things like furniture, you can probably put it down on a lower level make that life a little bit easier for yourself. The curtains, like I said, are a toggle up, so you can also have them sort of halfway up or fully up to the top. So what we can do, and you've got actually a really nice kind of pattern to it as well, um, looks, looks quite smart. So again, having that little bit more flexibility, you can just toggle them in, have them halfway so you allow a little bit of light to come through, but you're still hiding your bits that's necessary down. So you can do, you can flip, it over like so but then still leaves the ventilation point at the bottom sort of nice and free hanging point located in the middle of the actual tent as well to have a hanging lantern quite easily you do have obviously cable entry points located down the bottom so you've got one on either side sort of opposite one another so it doesn't really matter which side your main hookup is coming from you can more than happily kind of accommodate it the bedrooms itself uh, kind of feature kind of um, a bit more of a darker tint to them as well. So the joys of this, hopefully it kind of cut out a little bit more of early morning light. Each bedroom has their own individual kind of door as well. And there's a divider between it. So really it's a two and a two and the same on the opposite side. So in theory, what you can also do is to be fair is remove the bedroom divider itself, have it as one big bedroom. Uh, and that way, if you say it's a family of say four people, you know, mum and dad can be in here. 
and then you have one kid with a two birth on their own, another kid with two birth on their own. That way, if you've got friends coming over, they can more than happily kind of accommodate it. Merely being a sort of 280 width is a little bit snug to get probably true. You probably get self inflating mats in two lots of them either way, but I think anything sort of airbed wise, it's going to be a bit of a struggle to get a true two person airbed on either side. It's going to kind of touch the sides a little bit. In the bedroom section, we've also got little storage pockets located down the bottom here as well, just to kind of help to put things like keys and phones and easily things accessible during the middle of the night so you know exactly where they are. And we've also got low level ventilator and high ventilation points. Hanging points on either side of the bedrooms as well. And also we've got little Velcro tabs kind of leading down to the cable entry point so you can run the cable quite nice and neatly directly through there. Another feature you see with Vango is kind of their TBS system. So this is basically stands for tension band. What it is, it creates us just a bit more of a triangular formation with the outside guy ropes to give you a bit more stability in those higher winds. It's something you see located in all three middle sections. and something you'd probably put in when you leave the antenna for a period of time, rather than having them up all the time because it's just going to end up you know, lynching somewhere. So it's just one of those things, it's quite nice to have. Something they use in a kind of high-end backpacking tents and filter down through to all their tunnel tents. Um, and it's, again, probably 99% of people don't really use it, um, but it's there for when you actually do need it itself. I'll tell you what, let's kind of pick the camera up and kind of have a bit more of a kind of up close and personal with some of these details that I've mentioned about. So, you probably see the bedrooms actually now and kind of that rear vent at the bottom. I will kind of show you a bit more about that uh, as we kind of head around in just a moment. But the storage pockets, as previously mentioned, are located directly here. You've also got a hanging point for a lantern located inside the bedroom itself and also colour coordinated um, tabs for not only the inner bedroom but the divider to really kind of show that off. Low level ventilation and then also that curtain, like I said, with the element of privacy. And you've got that mesh window, as previously talked about, rolled down to its own little pocket. And that kind of seal, you can probably see that a bit nicer there as well. On the opposite side, same thing as we were talking about. And we'll kind of come out and around the tent a little bit. So you can kind of, I should show that two tonal guide point. So that's kind of the uh, mesh part on the outside. So that's how it looks when it's fully shut. And also you're just utilizing the point at the very, very top. And as we kind of come round, that's when we've got sort of the uh, part also fully open. So again, you have the option to do so. But what we'll do, let's quickly go over and have a look at the uh, 400 version, just to give you a bit of an idea on that. Voila, so here is kind of the 400 version, same kind of idea when you've got a communal living area. And actually in the 400, the size of it is quite nice uh, in kind of the middle section. Really it's a two and a two and you sort of sleep yourself um, orientation around the other way. So rather than going sort of um, sort of front to the back, you are sort of side on. That way you kind of maximize your space and actually really you do benefit from a slightly larger bedroom section um, in this area. So it's definitely more, I'd say a, a truer four. Um, rather than kind of the eight, which is a bit more of a, say, a comfy six, if we say so. But all the same features with the darker bedrooms, the rear ventilation panel at the bottom, storage pockets on the side, the TBS system, um, and we've got, sort of, again, two bigger um, sort of entrances with those mesh panels built in. Same kind of configuration with the lips. We've got a trip, sort of, um, a no trip hazard coming directly in and out. Worth mentioning on this, actually, the door is incorrect. It's going to be one complete door rather than having a half and a half. Um, so please disregard that for the time being. This is kind of a, a one of the uh, sort of first sort of samples, but I think overall it's a really quite nice size. I think again for a, a family of uh, four, I think it works really nicely. Um, it's not often we see a small visa V tent in the range anymore, so it's quite nice to have something a bit different. Now, as we come back around the other side, you can see now with that ventilation point how that works. So we've got it sort of pitched really nice and neatly, so you still have the airflow but you've got protection against kind of the weather. weather. Um, so again, that keeps it really quite nice and tidy. And still got the color coordinated poles, really just losing one pole in the central section. So I think actually I'm quite surprised on how generous the, um, the 400 living areas in relation. You know, I think proportionally, I think that works really well. But let's quickly head on back to the 800 and finish up on a few other things. 
So all in all, I think generally the Castle is a really quite a nice addition. Certainly I think uh, from an improvement point of view in comparison to its, like I said, its, its previous version with the Longley, I think there's some really nice talking points, be it the extra ventilation, be it the slightly darker bedrooms, the um, fabric story with the whole kind of um, better colour resilience and the eco side of things, the, the even the lips, you know, a more sort of comprehensive way of shutting it up and stopping them from the wind coming in, uh, the extra mesh on the side doors, the new colour, there's there's lots and lots to talk about and I think they have made a real good uh, choice of actually improving it and changing a range from what was basically more probably definitely more entry level and price pointed, now we've got a lot more spec and features going on for not too dissimilar in terms of the price so I think they've done a really good of kind of just again like I said, including more for your money and creating that whole kind of better value really with it. If you have any more questions or queries or want any more information on either the, the 800XL or the 400, you're welcome to check the link below this video and take you through to our website. We have all the information on things like spec, pack sizes, floor dimensions, individual feats listed, as well as obviously the pitching and packing videos with other products including the air version of the Castlewood, which you can always check out our little video review on that as well. But in all, that's quite a, quite a lot of bits of bobs going on there. Um, and always great to hear feedback from you. So feel free to comment in the box below and always have any sort of uh, comments, concerns, or any queries about kind of the Castlewood. Uh, it's always good to have feedback, good or bad. So that's our little video review on the brand new Van Gogh Castlewood 400 and 800 XL polled tent. Hopefully we'll see you again soon in our next At Walls Outdoors video.